In this video, I will cover the steepest descent algorithm. This is an example of an iterative least squares method, where what we're trying to do typically is model some measured data vector M um, through a system matrix, a system model operating on some parameter vector theta. Um, it might also be written in this kind of form here, some data vector Y being modeled by some system matrix A operating operating on a vector x. Now I've noted here that there is in general an error, there's a discrepancy between these two. The model won't match the measured data due to noise or other modeling inconsistencies. And so for that reason what we can do is just simply rearrange this and say well there will be a discrepancy between my measured data vector m and uh, my model in other words my parameter vector theta running through a system model A. There will be a discrepancy and for that reason, we devise the least squares problem where what we're trying to do is find a least squares estimate of the vector of parameters theta such that when you use that parameter vector theta, for example, it could be an image, um, when you run that through a system model A, that could be a forward projection for a medical imaging system, it needs to agree with some noisy measured data vector M or in general any data vector M that you're trying to model it needs to agree in this least square sense whereby what we can do is just look at the difference and seek to minimize that square difference for each and every element in that difference vector and that's why we use the L2 norm here and uh, when we find the theta that minimizes that difference we'll call that the least squares estimate of theta um, in subscript notation, matrix vector multiplication is written like this, and the vector m appears there. So we'll go through this in a bit more detail in the next slide. Just to say that there are iterative methods out there that are quite simple to use, like the Landweber method or the simultaneous algebraic reconstruction technique. Those methods, though, can be slow to converge to the least squares estimate. The fast method out there is known as conjugate gradient, but in order to understand conjugate gradient, we really do first need to understand steepest descent, which is the topic of this video. So what we're gonna to do to minimize, to find the theta that minimizes that least squares objective function or cost function or loss function, if you like, uh, what we're gonna to need to do is find the gradient. And we'll consider the gradient with respect to a single uh, element of the vector theta. So in an imaging context, this could be some single pixel value. And um, to find um, that, what we're dealing with then is the partial derivative of this expression with respect to a single element of the vector theta, a single pixel value, if you like. So applying basic differentiation to that, this term here, we need to take the two down to the front and that cancels with the half that was in there in the first place. And uh, then we multiply by the derivative of this expression just using the chain rule and so the derivative uh, of this expression with respect to theta j well theta j is just going to be one of the terms in that summation so b is one to capital j uh, one of those elements will be uh, when b is equal to j and the coefficient for that is going to be a i j with a minus there and so therefore i've got a minus a i j that has come out the front so rearranging that, uh, we've just got the M with the AIJ there and the minus, and then we've got a minus and a minus, so sigma AIJ applied to this term here, which was just A theta from the previous slide. So um, if we go back now from subscript notation to vector notation, we end up with this expression here. So here I just want to point out that AIJ MI, when summing over I, actually corresponds to A transpose um, operating on M. In other words, you just swap the rows and columns of the matrix A and apply that uh, to the vector M. And uh, to see that, you just need to realize that in regular matrix vector multiplication, which in fact is shown here, um, in regular matrix vector multiplication, what we're doing is taking each of the rows, each of the row vectors of the matrix A, and taking them in scalar product, in scalar product with the vector theta. And so we can see that by considering that we've got row i, and then we consider all of the columns, if you like, which exist along a given row i, all of the elements um, along all of the columns for a fixed row i, um, we take those um, 
in product with all of the elements in the column vector theta. That's just conventional matrix vector multiplication. Whereas over here, uh, we're doing that process now uh, down uh, the columns rather than across the rows over there. So that's why that's A transpose M. Okay, so let's just rearrange that. And what we can see here is that we have a difference uh, between two um, vectors, basically. So on the right-hand side here, this is A transpose uh, applied to your noisy or your measured data vector M. And uh, we often, in an imaging context, call that a back projected image, A transpose M. You just take your, your measured data and back project it by applying the transpose of the system model to the, to the data vector. Very easy process. Um, and then, so that's called the back projected image. And then here, what we have is a prediction of that back projected image. So given any theta, we can forward model it uh, using the system matrix A and then back project that uh, to get a prediction of the back projected image. And so what we see then is we have this very simple expression for a gradient vector. Now here I was doing the partial derivative um, for any given theta j. What I'm doing here, of course, is now considering all theta j's. And so that's why I'm getting a gradient vector. Um, just to point out here that because uh, we're doing A transpose A, um, I'm labeling that, that's a symmetric, a real symmetric matrix, because A is a real matrix in what I'm considering here. A transpose A is symmetric, and uh, therefore, um, just to point out that as a property of H, because we will use that later on. Um, so I've just relabeled A transpose A as H, and I'm just relabeling A transpose M, uh, that back projected data is just a vector G. And again, it's this difference of back projected images that is the gradient vector. And that's going to tell us which direction we need to go in for this uh, least squares uh, algorithm that we're about to present. And um, for shorthand then, we're just going to say that that difference in back projected images is just a gradient vector gamma, which means that if we have some estimate of what our parameter vector should be, such as uh, our, our image that we're reconstructing, um, for some estimate theta k, we have a corresponding gamma k, a gradient vector, where that corresponds to taking theta k, forward projecting it, back projecting it, and then comparing it to the actual measured back projected image g. So this is the steepest descent approach. What we have then is some starting estimate um, theta zero. So I'm uh, representing that on this figure here. Um, theta zero would correspond um, here to just a two element vector. We'd have the first element being the value along this axis, the second element being the value along that axis, and then this direction would tell us what is the, uh, what is the objective function, the cost function, you know, how, how big or small is that sum of square differences. So for a starting guess theta zero, here I'm close to the origin, what we'd be able to do is find out what the gradient is at that current position because that gradient is going to tell us the direction to go in in order to reduce um, that objective function, the cost function, the, the sum of square differences. So gamma tells us the direction to go in. So what we need to do then is given some starting guess, we want to add on, or in fact it would be subtract, we'll find out that alpha will turn out to be negative. Um, we need to add on some amount of the gradient um, in order to get to a better estimate theta 1. And with steepest descent, the goal is to try and get to um, the minimum in the search direction of the gradient. How do we get to the minimum of the cost function in that single direction? So the gradient uh, vector gamma 0 is just given by this expression here. We've already seen how to find the gradient from the previous uh, slide. So given an estimate theta zero, we forward project, then back project, and we do A, A transpose, and then we compare that to the actual measured uh, back projected data. That's A transpose M that gives us the gradient. And so the whole point then is how do we find how much of that search direction do we use in order to arrive at theta one? And uh, the, the point will be that as we uh, progress along this search direction, we get um, new values of the vector uh, theta, new element values in the vector theta. And at a certain point here, we'll be able to see that at the minimum in that search direction, the gradient at that new position theta one will be orthogonal 
to the original search direction gamma zero. So that's what I'm showing here. The red arrow is the gradient vector. It's that difference in back projected images and where we want to get to, because as we progress along here, the gradient will be changing all the time. We've got a new um, value, uh, a new estimate of theta, if you like, as we go along here. And then when we're here, um, we want to be at the theta one where the, the gradient is now orthogonal to that search, that original search direction. And so that's what I'm showing there with that uh, green square showing orthogonality. And we know that when we've arrived at uh, that new estimate theta one, there will of course be a gradient that exists at that new estimate gamma one, which is going to be theta one H, um, and then the difference with G, the back projected image. So if you didn't quite follow that, here it is again, there's theta zero, our initial um, estimate of parameters, the two elements, and what we're doing is um, progressing along um, a search direction gamma zero and at each given position as we progress along that direction we have a new gradient until ultimately we arrive at theta one where now the gradient is orthogonal at right angles to the original search direction gamma zero and at, the new, at that new position that's theta one is going to be equal to the original theta plus some step size alpha that we're trying to find uh, which is a scalar multiplication of that search vector gamma zero. And gamma zero is, of course, just a, an image, the difference of back projected images. OK, so let's figure out how to find alpha. We need to find where those gradients are orthogonal. OK, so here to be general, I'm calling this an initial search direction D zero. We know that's going to be gamma zero for the steepest descent method. And uh, what we require then is to find a step size alpha such that we arrive here where gamma one, and this is gamma one, because it's just the difference of back projected images, the predicted back projected image for the new estimate theta one, okay, compared to the measured one. We, we require orthogonality of that uh, gamma one, the gradient there at theta one, with the original search direction D0. And we define orthogonality just by this scalar product. We know that the scalar product of two vectors is zero when they are orthogonal. Okay, so let's now substitute in for theta one. We know that theta one is gonna be theta zero plus our unknown step size alpha times the search direction D0. So we just substitute that in here and that's how we get that expression there. And then we just develop that a bit more. So I've just put D0 across here. This is H theta zero transpose and then D0, D0 with that term and then D0 with this term. And that's how I get this expression. And then I just work with that a bit more. And uh, so this term here, I've placed on the right hand side here, this term here with the alpha zero in it, I've put on the left hand side here. And then of course this uh, negative term here can appear positively on the right hand side as shown. Uh, we can rearrange that to solve for alpha. So all I've done is take this, uh, these terms here and put them in the denominator here. And that allows us to have an expression for alpha zero. And just developing these further, we can just group the terms in the numerator there. So it's G minus H theta zero transpose with D zero divided by now in the, in the denominator here, I've just used a simple rule here that H, uh, so matrix vector, and then all of that transposed is gonna be the vector transposed multiplied by H transpose in that order. But because we're dealing with a real symmetric matrix H, H transpose is the same as H. And so that explains that denominator. And so again, there is the graphic showing that as we progress from theta zero to theta one, uh, we can see that the vector is changing until the point of orthogonality at the end there. And um, that will give us the overall step size, so alpha um, times that original search direction, where the original search direction was just the gradient at that initial estimate, theta zero. So that's all there is actually to the method. There's the calculations again on the slide. And just to spell out what that last result is, um, G minus H uh, theta is nothing more than the negative of the gradient. Remember the gradient before was H theta minus G. So this is the negative of the gradient vector. And of course, that's the gradient vector evaluated at the initial estimate uh, theta zero. So that's a uh, gamma zero. 
uh, transpose uh, D0, so that's just a scalar product at the top there. Uh, and in the denominator, again, simple to calculate. And just to point out furthermore that for the um, steepest descent algorithm, that initial search direction is none other than gamma zero, the gradient at that initial estimate. And that allows us to come up with this general expression for the steepest descent algorithm, which um, goes with these corresponding equations, which says for any given current estimate of your vector of parameters theta, so call it theta k, you forward project, back project, and once you've got that predicted back projected image, um, you can compare it to the measured data back projected, so that's A transpose M, and that will give you the gradient vector gamma k. Once you've got that gradient vector gamma k, here it is in this expression here, you know you need to add that on to your current estimate. In fact, it's a subtraction to reduce uh, the cost function, the least squares cost function, and so um, the negative was nicely calculated when we found alpha. And um, this part here, this numerator and denominator, are nothing more than scalar values. This is a scalar product of the gradient vector, and this also is another scalar product. You basically take your gradient vector, forward project, back project, um, and then you've got to do that in scalar product with um, the gradient vector again. So this um, is just a scalar value, the step size for the gradient, and you take the negative of that, um, so that when you've added that on to your current estimate, theta k, you get a next better estimate, theta k plus 1. That's all there is to it. It's a pretty nice algorithm. However, it does zigzag um, towards the solution and so is not as efficient as another method called conjugate gradient. But nonetheless, a very interesting method to know about. Thanks for listening.